All right, Shalom, Shalom Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High Yahweh, Bashem Hamashiach, Ramalak Yahweh Shah. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father who the world calls God. And Yahweh Shah is the name of his beloved Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whom is the Savior of the nation of Israel. It's Brother Malachi out of the WFI Detroit camp, coming at you with another lesson, another cold cut through the Spirit and Power Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Keeping this word going, staying diligent within prophecies, edifying the sheep and feeding the lambs of the Most High. And as a man of the Lord, this is what we should be doing in the last days. Now we know it's different offices within the body, but we should all be, you know, figuring out what our office is and magnifying it for the furtherance of the gospel and for the edifying of the body of Amashiach. Right? So let's get a quick precept on that. Let's get Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Right? It's Romans chapter 12 and verse 5. So we being many are one body in Hamashiach, and every one members one of another. So we are one body in Hamashiach and Hawashah. Although there may be different congregations and camps and churches set up throughout these last days, nonetheless, we still all one body in Hamashiach and Hawashah. Right? It say, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Matter of fact, Shalakia, before I read on, let's get Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. What does it mean to be one body? Meaning to be on one accord. This would be, Shalakia, this is Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. So the scriptures say all the people gathered themselves together as one man, meaning these men were on one accord. For example, when we go out on the highways and byways, according to Luke chapter 14, verse 23, and we bring Israel back to the knowledge of the truth and repentance and teach them the word, we out there on one accord. Right? Although it may be 10 brothers, maybe 15, maybe even 30, but we're all in one accord. It's not 20 brothers out there speaking at one time. You have one main speaker, you have a couple readers, and the focal point is on the, that, uh, Salakia, the focal point is on the teacher and the lesson. It's not on everybody at the line. Why? Because we all one body, right? All right, so, um, Let's go back to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 5. And again, when we out there teaching, you know, sometimes Jake could get upset at that. You know, Jake tried to speak to the man at the end of the line. Or Jake tried to speak to everybody but the teacher. But you can't do that. That's out of order. The Lord said, let everything be done decently in the order. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. And again, that one teacher speaks for the whole congregation. Speaks for the it's like it speaks for every brother on that line. Why? Because we all don't want a core and we're one body in the Mashiach that I was shot. So let's keep reading. Verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to, to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Right, so you got brothers that's good in the prophecies. They're going in the second edges 15, 16. They breaking down revelations. They're going into Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. They're very skilled and gifted when it comes to breaking down the prophecies. They, they have verse 7 for ministry. Let us wait on our minister. The word minister means to serve. So you got brothers that's good at serving, and it's true, they like serving their brother. Whether that be charity, you know, picking up brothers for camp, dropping brothers off, you know, taking brothers to the grocery store, brother may not have a car, brother may not be mobile, so that brother is always there to help out a brother when it comes to picking up a brother, right? So you got to be able to be a servant in this thing, or he that teacheth on teaching, and you got good teachers in his truth, brothers that's very knowledgeable in the scriptures, they're well rounded. Whether it come to the scriptures, uh, Salaki, whether it come to prophecy, whether it come to history, whether it come to precepts and memorization, these brothers are gifted at that. Good teachers in this truth. 
Verse 8, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Right? So as rulers or as leaders, vanguards, captains, and officers, we have to be diligent. We have to hold ourselves. And um how do I say we have to hold ourselves accountable. We hold ourselves in high regards. Because if we doing something against the scriptures, and if we're not being diligent, then the soldier's not going to be diligent. The prospects, everything is going to fall out of line. Everything is going to be out of whack and out of order. Because as the scripture says, it's a rock chapter 10 and verse 2. Let me bring that out. This is a rock chapter 10 and verse 2. It says, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So again, they say, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So if you're a wicked judge, if you pervert in judgment, if you're not studying, if you don't know the precepts, then your soldiers not going to know the precepts. The people of your city are not going to be well-rounded in the scriptures, right? Because they look at you for guidance. They look at you to show them the way. And if you're not doing that, or if you're not diligent, the whole congregation is going to be out of order. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in the authority, the city shall be inhabited. And chiefly, that unwise king is the so-called white man. Why he's the unwise king because he's spraying chemtrails in the air. He's feeding the people fake foods, genetically modified organisms, right? He's killing them within his medical institution. So this man is an unwise king and he's destroying the mindset and the physicality of the people of this earth, right? So the point is, and the point of this lesson is, we are one body in Hamashiach Yahweh So you have to find out what your office is and it's truth. You have to magnify it for the building of this spiritual temple, right? So if you a brother that's good at counseling, magnify that office, reach out to brothers, you know, check up on brothers, you know, and um, whenever a brother's going through it or catching hell and affliction, you should be that brother that's always there for him, right? To give that brother sound counsel, knowledge and wisdom and understanding to, you know, basically alleviate their brother's situation and comfort their brother right if you are if you gifted at prophecy get into these scriptures go into revelation daniel ezekiel jeremiah go deep into it man and magnify that office for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. right same thing when it comes to teaching same thing when it comes to exhortation let's get another quick precept Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Amashiach Yahusha. But um, honestly, we can start at verse 4 is the initial point. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. So we all on the same mission. That's why brothers and sisters have to put aside their differences. Because at the end of the day, we all in the same mission. And that mission is to make it to the kingdom of heaven. That mission is to be beamed up in the chariot so we don't feel the destruction of Babylon the Great. So we don't die by way of a nuclear missile. So we don't starve by way of a famine. So we got to make sure that we are on one accord and that we're not bearing any grudges, having malice and guile toward our brothers. Because again, we are all on one mission. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. 
He that descendeth is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And this is talking about Yahweh Shah Mashiach when he was taken up in the book of Acts, the first chapter. Now he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, according to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 on down. So verse 11, it's saying he gave some apostles, which means to be sent out, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the work of the, so like it, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So you have these men within the church with different offices and different gifts, but it's all for the edifying of the body of Amashiach Yahweh Shah. Right, so again, you have to figure out what your office is in these last days. You have to magnify it for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry. So with that, I'm going to give all praise to see how about you now, Shah. Say shalom.